This is Matthew Cratters, Bitcoin University. Today, I want to teach you how to prove that you're Satoshi and how to prove that you control a certain Bitcoin address. We've had many pretenders over the years. Craig Wright pretended to be Satoshi, but ended up perjuring himself in court and being definitively shown that he was not Satoshi. And I'm going to show you another way in this video how we know that he's not Satoshi. But it turns out that we end up with these fake Toshis or fake Satoshis. Seems like every couple of months or at least every couple of years. We had something similar happen just a few days ago on Halloween on October 31st when this guy came along, a guy named, I guess, Stephen Mola and claimed to be Satoshi. Nakamoto. Of course, he had a few problems with his tech setup. He couldn't get his laptop working, so they're doing the event offline. And then when a reporter, Joe Tidy, asked him whether he is going to move some of Satoshi's coins, he said that he would in a, in a few months. But this was actually a, tr a trick question because what Joe asked, he asked if he could move some of the Genesis Bitcoin. These are 50 Bitcoin that are in the Genesis block, the original block. And the important thing thing to know about these Bitcoin is they are hard coded into the protocol and can never be moved per the code. So this was actually even a trick question. If Stephen was in fact Satoshi, he would have said, of course, I can't move the Genesis Bitcoin that are in that first block, those first 50 Bitcoin. These Bitcoin can never be moved, utilized or spent. But how to prove that you're Satoshi, or at least that you control the private key that can be used to unlock and move Bitcoin from an early Bitcoin address? Well, the first method is just to go ahead and send the coins to another Bitcoin address by signing a transaction, and only someone with the correct private keys can do this. So if you're able to move coins from very early on in Bitcoin's history, that either proves that you're Satoshi or that you have somehow gotten your hands on his keys. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to help to support the channel. Click the subscribe button, that really does help the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video. Share this video with a friend or family member. But what if you're Satoshi and you wanna prove ownership of some early Bitcoin without doing a transaction to move those coins? Or maybe you know you're not Satoshi, but you still wanna prove control over a given Bitcoin address, maybe to impress someone on a date, which is probably a pretty bad idea, or maybe to show your banker to prove that you have enough funds to buy a house or something like this, just to prove control over a certain Bitcoin address. Here's another method to do that. You sign a message for one of those Bitcoin addresses. It can be one that you actually control, or if you're Satoshi, it's gonna be one of those early Bitcoin addresses when Satoshi was one of the main miners. And he was doing this not to get rich, but he was doing this to secure the network. And of course, he's never sold or moved those coins. This is how you prove control of a Bitcoin address. You sign a message for that address with a private key associated with that particular Bitcoin address. Anyone can then use this public Bitcoin address. You don't need to show them your private keys. You can just tell them the public Bitcoin address and your signature and what the message was. They can use this to cryptographically prove that only you or only someone with the, the actual private keys could have signed this message. So that's what we're going to do right now. Let me just copy this phrase. Craig Wright is not Satoshi. Then we're going to go into the Sparrow wallet here where I have uh, I have 50,000 sats sitting at an address. If we go in the UTXOs tab here, we can see that chunk of Bitcoin. We can see the address that it's sitting at, or at least see part of it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to sign a message associated with this address. So you can either go up to Tools and click Sign Verify Message, but a shortcut would be to right click right here, Sign Verify Message, and then I'm just going to paste that message so I don't have to type it right now. And then I'm going to sign the message using the private keys of this particular Bitcoin address. So now we have a signature and we can use this same tool to also verify that this is correct. Though I'm gonna show you how to do it with an external source as well. If we just click verify, verification succeeded, the signature verified against the message. But now let's use an external verification technique. So again, I could have used any message here. Someone could say, uh, write this particular message because I'm just giving it to you now and there's no way you would have known in advance. So you really can put any message here and you can change the message if you need to. But what we're gonna do now is verify that I do control the private keys to this Bitcoin address and only I could have written this message. We're gonna do that. I just need to copy the signature here. So we have three pieces of data. We have the Bitcoin address, we have the message, which again could have been anything, and then we have the signature as well. So we're gonna go now to an external source. 
we're going to go to verifybitcoinmessage.com. I've already pasted in the Bitcoin address. I pasted in the message. Now I'm going to paste in the signature that was just generated on Sparrow. And again, I basically signed this message, this particular message. Craig Wright is not Satoshi. I signed it using my Bitcoin private keys in that hot wallet, in that software wallet inside of Sparrow. And now what we're doing, we're using external source to verify only I could have signed this message because based on this Bitcoin public address and based on this message and the signature, signature generated, it shows that I do have possession still of the private keys associated with that Bitcoin address. So we can verify right now. We just did it with Sparrow, but now we're using a different tool to verify it, an external tool. I'll click verify and it says, valid signature. So I could go back, I could change this message, but that is how you verify and uh, how you sign a message and then how you verify it. And this was a little problem that Craig Wright had because he told the court, the UK court, that he controlled certain Bitcoin addresses. But anyway, they signed messages calling Craig Wright a fraud and completely embarrassed him and showed what a liar he was in front of the court. He tried to walk it back saying, no message was signed. You can't sign anonymously. You have to have an identity to sign. Keys don't count. I got to go be. He has no idea what he was talking about. So this is pretty funny that this would happen to Bitcoin addresses that he claimed to control. So the next time someone claims to be Satoshi, you don't have to go to their press conference. You don't have to pay 500 pounds. You don't have to ask them lots of questions. You just ask them, please sign this message or sign any message that you, you decide using your private keys to prove control of this address. This is how you definitively prove, if not that you're Satoshi, at least that you currently control coins associated with Satoshi. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.